Okay, I want to tell you about angular momentum. Um, it's one of the last topics of this of this unit, but um, one of the most important topics of the unit. So um, let's take a, an object that's spinning around in a circle of radius r, and it's got a speed v. Um, we can ta talk about the, the rotational inertia of this system, if that's a string and this is a mass m. Um, we can talk about the I of it. Now the I of this, as long as it's a mass, a point mass, um, and that's the radius R, the I is just going to be um, M times R squared. And um, we can also talk about its kinetic energy. Its kinetic energy, uh, either linear, it either has linear or rotational. You wouldn't say it has both. But you can count it as linear or rotational. Let me show you. If it's linear, then you'd say it's equal to one half mv squared. If it's um, rotational, then the rotational kinetic energy would equal one half i omega squared. As I said, don't count both of these though, because it's these are really the exact same thing. Let me show you why. Um, this is going to be one half. Now, I is mr squared, and um, omega is v over r, so it'd be v over r squared using the bridge equation. And so the r squareds cancel, and look, you just get one half mv squared. That's not a coincidence, that's because um, you can either count it as rotational or linear. Okay, but um, it actually has one other um, one other um, thing about rotation, and that is that it has some angular momentum. Oh, it has momentum. Its momentum is um, is p equals m v, but it's also got rotation uh, rotational momentum. That's sometimes called angular momentum. We'll give that an L. And the L is going to be um, not M times V, but it's going to be the counterpart to M, which would be I times omega. Um, the angular momentum would be in the same direction as omega. So omega, it's going around like this. Omega is straight, straight out at you. Well, same, same with L. L is straight out at you. Um... Another formula for L, if you're for a point mass going around a, um, a center, is just R cross P. So um, L is R cross P. And so um, let me show you how these are the same. Um, let's see, I is, is MR squared. And this omega is V over R. Does that equal, this is a question, does that equal R? Now do you see how all of the momentum is perpendicular to R? So when I do R cross P, it's actually the same thing as just R times P because all of the momentum is perpendicular to R. So that's going to be R times MV. Yeah, sure enough, these R's cancel. And MRV is equal to RMV. Okay, so that's angular momentum. Um, one other thing about angular momentum. With angular momentum, just, how, just as um, F net equaled uh, dp dt, the rate at which momentum changes with time. Um, angular or net torque is equal to um, dl dt. The rate at which angular momentum changes with time. Hey, if there's no net torque, if f net equals zero, then we said p equals p prime. Well, that's true with uh, angular momentum too. If 
F if the net torque is equal to zero, then um, L will equal L prime for a system. That's if net torque is equal to zero. Okay, so um, let me just give you a, um, a bunch of cases where angular momentum is conserved. So here are some examples of when angular momentum would be conserved. Here's a really bad drawing of a skater. Um, a skater spinning around and they have an omega. And um, to spin faster, what they do is they bring their arms in. That makes their eye much less. It makes their rotational inertia much less. But then that means their omega goes way up. So I'll make a real big omega. So we can say that the angular momentum um, before equals the angular momentum after. And so I, this big I, times the little omega is equal to when the person brings in their arms, they reduce their I. So we actually have an I prime, but their omega goes way up then. Notice how their total angular momentum didn't change though. It stayed the same because there was no net torque on them. Let's take a look at another one. When stars collapse, I won't tell you why they collapse just now, but when they do collapse, um, they're spinning. So they might be spinning along this axis and they'll have an omega. And when they go ahead and collapse, their eye goes way down. Their, their rotational inertia goes way down. And so um, what astro astro uh, astronomers will do is they'll just apply um, L equals L prime to a system like this. And uh, the rotational inertia at the beginning is actually huge. And their omega might be small. But afterwards, their eye becomes real small because that all shrinks down. You'll do a problem on neutron stars um, in, the, in the book. And then their omega goes way up. The rate at which they spin goes way up. Okay, here's another one. We have um, a sandbag hitting um, a rotating platform. So the rotating platform has an omega. And even though there'll be a net force on the system, there'll be no net torque when the sandbag hits. Maybe the earth will put a force up, but the force up will go through the axis. Uh, but the, So the net torque will equal zero. And if that's the case, then we can say L equals L prime. Now the sandbag's going to stick and it's going to start to go with it. And so um, what you'd say is, um, you'd say the L of the turntable, uh, so that would be I of the turntable, turntable, um, times the omega, the original omega of the turntable. That will equal the I of the turntable afterwards. That won't change. Now the omega is going to go down of the turntable and that's because you have one more term here and that is the eye of the sandbag uh, times the omega of the sandbag. These two will have the same omega because it's uh, the sandbag will be stuck to here and spinning and so that's how you do a problem like that. What will be the eye of the sandbag? The eye of the sandbag right here, this one, will be the mass of the sandbag times how far it is from the axis squared. That's what the eye is. Okay, um, I have two more to tell you about, uh, and so actually three, and so I want to um, do one more video with this stuff. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.